Two local families struck by the same mysterious rare illness. The silent killer targets otherwise healthy children and the symptoms are often misdiagnosed. Here's Fox 5's Dr. Sapna Parikh with her special report. Uh -oh. Jonah Weissar is now two years old. Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine that Jonah probably won't live beyond his teenage years. He's just so full of life. You start giving high fives, big hugs. He, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. Can you give Seth a high five? Yay! Yay! <laughs> he walked on time. He crawled on time. He sat up on time. There was no signs of the disease whatsoever. It was during a routine visit to the doctor when his pediatrician questioned why Jonah's head was larger than normal. When we came back, our whole life was just shattered. 50 miles away in Ronkonkoma, Long Island, the O'Connor family was living the same mystery, but with different clues. <laughs> Their daughter Emily is now five and a half years old. So loving. I mean, she comes up and grabs your face and kisses you. Kisses Just wants you. to cuddle all the time. But when she was two, her mother noticed something was not quite right. When she should have been putting more words together was when I got a little nervous, and then she started to get a little um, antsy, you know, like the ADHD. So I put her into preschool three days a week, thinking she just needed the structure. We were looking at where the hearing loss uh, was it developmental due to the hearing. Uh, we thought maybe it was some kind of autism, um, mental retardation. But Emily's behavior, her frequent ear infections, and the size of Jonah's head are all signs of an extremely rare condition called San Filippo syndrome. It's a genetic condition where children are missing the enzyme that allows them to break down certain sugars, so they build up in all parts of the body and brain. We don't have a cure for it yet. We don't even have a treatment. Dr. Wendy Chung is the director of genetics at Columbia University Medical Center. She's treating both Jonah and Emily. It's a fatal condition where eventually they're unable to literally even breathe or do the basic things. She doesn't know any different. She doesn't know that she's behind. She doesn't understand that she's dying. She doesn't know this and she won't. That's the only blessing is she will never know. A real red flag that everyone should know is if your child should ever lose the ability to do something that they could do before, then that's the time to go right away to your pediatrician and demand that they start investigating things. But because the condition is so rare, doctors often miss the diagnosis. Is it possible that it's more common than we think that many of these kids with sure. autism or another developmental disorder may have San Filippo? Sure. So one of the things in general is that you don't know what you don't know. And so there are a bunch of kids, I'm sure, out there who are undiagnosed with San Filippo syndrome just because no one thought about it, no one's seen it before to know to test for it. What we're really getting upset about is when you read that they will lose memory of who you are. I mean you're going to have a child that almost has like an Alzheimer's. I fear, you know, the pain that when their bones start to deteriorate, their bodies just hurt. Both families have created websites for their kids. Her dance videos on there, her laughing and playing, picking pumpkins. Jonah's mother, Jill, says they have a window of opportunity before his condition gets worse. And I hope that I can get a cure in those two years so I never have to explain to him what's going to happen if I don't get this cure. If you want to learn more about Emily and Jonah and San Filippo syndrome, go to our website, myfoxny.com, click on the health tab. I'm Dr. Sapna Parikh, Fox 5 News. In entertainment